Thanks, Laura. Aaron. All right. I know what you mean. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting. Um, it's December 8th, 2021. Um, the first item on our agenda are comments from the chair. And my first comment is I see attendees starting to log in. Maybe I'll give that a couple more minutes. Um, so I have two comments. The first one I'll do is our next meeting is on December 22nd, which is the Wednesday before the Christmas holiday. I for one know I will not be able to attend, but I wanted to kind of take an informal roll call just so we can get a sense of based on what you know now, if we'll have a quorum or not. Um, so Michelle, do you have any idea if that night will work for you or not? I will be here for that night. Okay. Anna? I can be here. Okay. No for Larry. Fletcher? Um, I can be there. Yeah. Might be making some rum punch that time, but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Leroy, so this is a double pronged question for you. One is, can you? And two, if you can, are you willing to chair the meeting? Oh, good point. But uh, yeah, same answer. I can't. Looks like okay. Was it can or cannot? I'm sorry, I didn't. Can't. Good. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it sounds like we're on for December 22nd. I will not be here. Apologies. Okay. Um, thank you in advance, Leroy, for chairing that one. Um, and the second announcement is just so, so far we have, it sounds like eight attendees and we might get a few more who are tracking the um, Shootsbury Road um, AMP solar application. And I just wanted to say at the top of the meeting, if you're here for, let me read the thing exactly, the um, notice of intent for TRC for AMP, ASD Shootsbury MMC, Shootsbury MA Solar LLC for the construction of a solar voltaic energy generation facility and access road and buffer zone to BVW at Shootsbury Road. That application was withdrawn. Um, so we will not be talking that that hearing is closed and we will be not be talking about that meeting, that project tonight. So again, Shootsbury Road Solar, that application for the solar installation project was withdrawn. So we will not be talking about that project tonight. Um, on our agenda, just quickly for those of you who are logged in, we have an um, RDA uh, for a property at 55 Mechanic Street, the notice of intent for um, UMass undergraduate and graduate housing um, within 100 feet of Tan Brook. Um, and then we have an ANRAD um, SW. SWCA is representing an applicant um, for uh, confirmation of resource area boundaries at 246 Montague Road. Um, okay, so that's what I had to say at the top. Commissioners, um, this is one of those sneaky agendas again, where um, it seems like we have some, some hearings that we'll be able to roll through pretty quickly, but there's a sticky one at the end at 246 Montague Road. And then there's just a lot going on in town that Aaron's fielding, navigating and dealing with. Um, so, stick with me um, and let's keep the pace going. Um, for those members of the public are, who are here, thank you for joining us. Um, just so you all know, the way we usually do this is for each hearing, I'll open the hearing. We'll have about five minutes of project overview, um, five minutes of staff report and commissioner comment. Sometimes that's five to seven minutes. And then we'll take two minute public comments. Um, and we really have to limit um, our time and keep things moving just because these meetings are packed and um, could last until midnight um, if we let them. So thank you again, everyone, for being here. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Dave. Do you have anything to report tonight? Hi, good evening. I can try to be real quick, Jen, because I know um, you, you all have a lot, um, a lot in front of you. Um, part of part of my thinking is as I look at my my uh, screen behind me and and my outfit, I think how long it's almost like uh, I feel like I've been caught in the same you know the the same Zoom meeting since like 2000. So anyway, here we go. 
So um, lots of things happening before uh, winter sets in here in conservation. Um, unfortunately, starting off with some sad news, we did lose Brendan Kelly, our assistant land manager. Um, uh, you may be aware uh, Brendan was with us for, I, I think, less than a year, and and he got the calling out west, and he is headed out west to, to find his fortune and, and go do some exciting things out there. Um, he's very interested in uh, firefighting, as a matter of fact. That's kind of what he's decided, I believe, is his career path and talked about maybe even jumping out of planes or helicopters to fight fires. So crazy stuff, but uh, we wish him well. So we are searching for an assistant land manager. The position is posted. Please, if you know anybody, uh, point them toward our, our website and have them apply. We'll be putting together a search committee uh, very soon on that. We're trying uh, very quickly to complete all of the work on the Robert Frost Trail. This is the $30,000 grant we got from the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Brad, Brendan, and, and some limited summer help have been trying to do that uh, over the last couple of months. They've been making great progress. <clears throat> um, I believe they finished the last of four permitted bridges uh, in Lawrence Swamp and south of Lawrence Swamp just, uh, I think, late last week. So um, four bridges, hundreds and hundreds of feet of bog bridging, and lots of hard work. Uh, went into that. So we're wrapping that up before the snow flies and, and we'll submit a reimbursement to the state. Um, let's see. We're also working on the KC Trail and this is all weather dependent. I know there's snow flurries out there there tonight, but Brad will work if there's no snow and he can run a tractor, he'll do it. So we're trying to uh, uh, finish up some work on the KC Trail uh, from Southeast Street, uh, not far um, uh, from from where some of you uh, know well, uh, the the uh, from Southeast Street down to the rail trail, we started some work down there, and it's been kind of bumpy, and so we're getting some new material delivered there to kind of smooth out some of the edges down there. Um, uh, I know some commissioners use that trail, as does the public. I've heard from many of them. Um, we're also trying to address some of the safety issues around that bridge. You know, we've been struggling with that bridge for a long time. Aaron and I have had numerous meetings, emails, talking with consultants, and um, we'll probably do something to button that bridge up for this year. But um, that's going to be a major project in 2022 and, and in our top three of let's let's get to the bottom of this bridge and, and do it right for the next 40 years. Um, Brad is also going to be working on Markert's Pond. We issued an emergency cert for Markert's Pond to just shore up that dam at Markert's Pond down in Orchard Valley and uh, get that buttoned up. We're working with the town engineer, Jason Skeels. He'll, he'll be on site next week uh, to really kind of shore that up for the winter. We had some um, erosion happen there in the last couple of storms of 21, and we want to really firm that up for the winter. Um, Aaron has been working on dam assessments. These are required assessments for the various dams that we, the town, owns and are on conservation land. One of them is Puffer's Pond, so these are required by the Department of of conservation and recreation phase ones. Uh, puffers, I believe, is a two-year cycle or a three-year cycle frequent because it's a high hazard dam. And then um, um, Aaron has also initiated a phase one of, of the so-called uh, the dam on the on the Epstein Pond or uh, the, the pond we just recently acquired in South Amherst. So those will be ongoing and we hope to have both of those done, I would say, in the next 30 days, 45 days um which which would be great um uh, we had a contractor out at podic catherine cole in north amherst uh getting most of the work done to uh, do a new parking lot out there and uh set the stage for some new kiosks to go in there um in the spring so if you're out at catherine cole and podic uh take a look at that work it really makes kind of what was a bumpy ride out there and some big potholes a much smoother approach to podic catherine cole um what else uh, all of this before winter sets in and then finally i did mention at the last meeting dcr is concerned about the bay road parking lot uh, that we put in and i'm i'm happy to say that uh i haven't gotten the letter yet i'll share the letter with you when we get it it's due any day now uh, but dcr reviewed our work uh, they were actually quite pleased with the work um and they're um they're willing to concede that really um had we gone through a, a more formal process, they would have allowed the work to happen. Uh, as I said last meeting, it was really on me that we didn't we didn't um, we didn't uh, realize that 
that section of the of the conservation area was covered by a conservation restriction. Um, but um, so as soon as I get that, we'll put it in a little packet. Aaron can share it with you all and the supporting materials that we submitted. But the bottom line is uh, we're in compliance and they're fine with the work we did. They actually think that by consolidating and concentrating the parking, uh, we're going to try to do away with all of the on-street impacts that happen down there on Bay Road, both on the south and north side of Bay Road. And we're going to uh, reseed those in the spring. We might even put some boulders in down there so that you don't get these big uh, 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 impacted areas on either side of Bay Road. It also makes it much safer down there. We don't want people parking on either side of Bay Road and crossing on that busy stretch. So um, those are five or six of the hot kind of topics here in the in the department before winter uh, sets in and happy to take any quick questions if if your uh, agenda allows if your time allows. Hickory Ridge. Oh Hickory thank you thank you Larry I, I was meant to put that on my list. Um, we are uh, we are um, we are on track. Um, I know I've said that before it's it's really right now uh, in the hands of the lawyers the lawyers are going back and forth um, uh, we have a little staff input. In fact, Aaron and I and other planning staff will be meeting on Friday on Hickory. We're really just getting down to the nitty gritty of what the um, easement agreement says and, and what the terms of the easement agreement are for the solar, for the solar facility. Uh, how do they get there? How wide is the easement? Um, you know, who maintains the road if it washes out? Who maintains the bridge if it washes out? Things of that sort. Uh, we're also working out the final terms with the assessor's office for the payment in lieu of taxes. So the solar the solar company will pay a pilot uh, every year to the town for the um, for the value of the solar installation on the 25 acres. So the lawyers are kind of working out the final details there. Um, I'll throw out a date of January 15th. That's our goal um, to close by January 15th. If you've been out to Hickory recently, the town worked with Barry Roberts, who's the interim holder of the property, and we consolidated the parking out there with some Jersey barriers. Uh, we really wanted to not have that big, huge parking lot open for people to come down with snowmobiles or ATVs and all of that. It also gives the police and fire department uh, a more concentrated, easy area to, to kind of keep an eye on this winter. So we should own the property by January 15th. We've got signs uh, getting printed to put up kind of town ownership, what some of the rules and regulations will be down there. And um, and then our planning process will kind of um, uh, ramp up in the spring. We did have some very nice meetings with residents of Mill Valley Apartments. They're the first apartment complex on the north side of Hickory Ridge. Uh, planning staff and our, our community uh, participation officers and I went out and we had some great conversations with adults uh, and some young adults and some teens about what they would like to see at Hickory Ridge. Um, the, the the funniest thing that they shared with me, and I thought it was really cute, uh, um, uh, a couple of the young folks said, it would be great to have a petting zoo out there. Um, so uh, we took that under advisement, but they would, love to have, they would love to have live animals. And I said, well, there's many live animals that live out there yeah. and they're wild. And we talked about foxes and deer and, and coyotes and things. So. But um, lots of ideas from the folks at Mill Valley, from community gardens to a pavilion for picnicking to uh, a petting zoo to I'm trying to think what else came up. Uh, well, obviously trails and connections to the village center. So we're on that. We have over a hundred, uh, over a hundred suggestions that have come in on the web page to engage Amherst. So if you have more ideas about Hickory, go to the website and put in your ideas. Petting Zoo was already taken. <laughs> you can probably second that, Fletcher. Right. <laughs> I love um, the Petting Zoo idea. That's awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Um, if nobody else has questions for Dave, Dave, will you pass on our thanks to Brendan for his time and hard work? Mm -hmm. I know this was a hard summer um, to get anything done between rain and trees being down and everything. So please wish him luck. Yeah. <laughs> from a more small note of, of good. Um, I successfully advocated, have been advocating for new vehicles for the conservation department. Our vehicles are extremely old. And so they were included in the capital plan. So 
believe it or not, we have those on order. So sometime wow. in 22, nice. first four months of 22, um, we will have some new vehicles that are not what 11 and 16 years old. So, yeah. Were, um, wasn't one of those trucks a hybrid where like one was the original truck like cabin and the other was a new truck bed? <laughs> I seem to remember yeah, that. Yeah. Yes, a hybrid in that regard, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't get hybrids for the kind of work they oh, do yes. yet, but that's coming. You know, um, Ford and Chevy and other other vehicle makers are coming out with hybrid trucks and or electric trucks. So we're looking forward to the day that we can convert to uh, full, fully electric vehicles for our staff. So thanks. Great. All right, thanks, Dave. Um, Aaron. Um, what do you want to do with this, with this time? Yeah. Um, 12 minutes. Yeah. Maybe I'll just give you a quick update on some enforcement. And if we still have time, we can get to the emergency cert. Um, Canton, um, Canton Ave subdivision, um, we had required the area to be reflagged. And when the area was reflagged, we identified that the wetland had expanded significantly. And um, so we had required the owner to put together a new um, engineered, basically to, to survey the new flagging and determine how it impacted the approved subdivision plan in terms of the house layout, the stormwater layout. And what was determined based on that was that in fact, it is going to impact the original approved plan. So I got a sort of plan revision, but the plan revision changed the house footprint and removed the stormwater um, features that were approved on the plan. Um, I did include that plan, I believe in your packets. And I guess my feeling on it with the Canton is that they should just file a new order of conditions at this point. The order of conditions was um, continued more than once and uh, is kind of at the end of its life. And considering there's a plan change, I think it doesn't make any sense to amend the permit to take into consideration the, um, the change, but. Um, so you would file a new permit, a new application, Aaron, entirely. <laughs> Correct, because the conditions have changed so drastically on one of the lots with the expanded wetland that they cannot construct that lot as approved in the order of conditions. It's it's changed so dramatically the house footprint and the stormwater structure couldn't be constructed. It requires like a, an entire redesign of one of the lots. Um, okay. <laughs> So, so how do we communicate this or what, what what support do you need from us for this? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I let them know that they would need to file a new, um, well, I mean, I said either you'll need to amend or file a new permit. The commission needs to kind of weigh in on this. And they said that they would check back in after the holidays with us um, to see kind of what the process was. So. I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware that this is still moving forward behind the scenes. And um, I think that makes the most sense. I don't think it makes sense to amend a, you know, six year old order of conditions that's about to expire where there's a plan change that's pretty dramatic. Um, Can you remind me when it expires? Do you remember? <laughs> It would be easy for me to tell you that, but there's this tolling period oh, that's that right, actually that's right. okay. requires like a calculation for me to tell you the exact date. So, but what I can do actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I will calculate what the expiration date is and we can maybe talk about it in early January, if that makes okay. sense. Okay, great. With the new design, is that the same? Was this, actually, was it Bucky Sparkle to the first one? Did they use the same? Uh, they as engineer yeah bucky did do the um the plan he he put the design together for them but he did speak to me offline and basically explain all the concerns and then when i looked at the plan um 
it was pretty easy to identify right off the bat. They, the house footprint has completely changed. The driveway footprint changed. They're not, there's no stormwater feature on the site that was originally approved. Mm. So Bucky is involved. Um, I don't know what his schedule looks like in 2022. I think he was trying to help him out to resolve the enforcement issue and kind of come to a determination as to whether the project would need to be redesigned. And we've determined that indeed the project does need to be redesigned based on the change. So I don't know if he's going to stay on uh, for another permit round on this, but he did put together the rendering for, you know, making a determination on the, the change to the wetland. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the heads up on that one. Okay. Um, the other thing that you guys should be aware of is the fact that um, on Tuckerman and Kingman, um, there's a, uh, it's a cul-de-sac. So if you're coming off of, is it um, East Pleasant Street? Um, uh, what's the road? There, um, I'm trying to remember. And so there, um, this, there's a, come again? Henry Street? Right. Henry. So from Henry Street, you can see the back end of the subdivision. Um, but I'm trying to think, it's like there's a cemetery on, um, on East Pleasant Street, almost to where it connects to Pine Street. Um, and there's like a huge subdivision in between uh, that road and Henry Street. And it abuts up against the railroad tracks that run along Henry Street. If you drive down there, you'll see that two lots have been clear cut basically for house lots. And uh, it was reported to me and I went out and looked at it that there is an intermittent stream that is um, uh, abutting one of the lots. It's it's not an, an egregious violation in the sense of, I think the commission probably would have permitted the cutting, even if they had come to us with a, an application. It's like the outer 40 feet of the 100 foot buffer zone that was cut. Um, and so I required them to file a request for determination and hire a consultant and come to us with a, a plan for the house, the house lot that's close to the, the intermittent stream. So just so that you guys know um, that that was a like an enforcement response issue. And there, in the course of dealing with a, a building permit application, I was actually out on site um, reviewing a building permit. And um, let me see if I can get the photos up actually. Um, there, I heard a chainsaw going. I was taking some measurements to see if these people who were filing a building permit needed to file a permit, which they didn't end up needing to do. But um, I heard a chainsaw going down along the stream. And so I walked over to the folks house and um, as it turns out, they were doing some, some tree clearing, but the trees, there's a, on, on Chapel Road, there is a stand, a grove of um, pine trees, which, Sorry, I'm just queuing up the photos so I can show you guys. Um, there's a, a stand of dead pine trees um, in this neighborhood and they run all along these people's backyards. And you can see, they, I mean, they're, they're very dead and they've, I mean, they've got, um, they're like dead snags with, with um, nesting cavities in them and everything. And they're in some cases, these ones are actually, the, these photos are closer to the road, but they're somewhere they're very close to people's houses. So um, as a result, I ended up issuing an emergency certification for the tree clearing because it was clear that they were hazardous. And one of them had actually already fallen down on somebody's deck and like damaged their house. <laughs> so uh, so issued an emergency cert. So we just need to, um, to ratify that this evening and I'll... Um, get the motion back up for you. Just getting down the pictures here. Are we ready to go with that ratification? Okay. Yes. Uh, so I move we ratify the emergency certification at 52 Chapel Road. Second. All right, voice vote. Um, Leroy. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. I'm an aye, and Laura's absent, I guess. Aaron. 
Um, okay. Um, three, minutes. three minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about sort of some of the behind the scenes stuff really quickly. Um, I'll just talk quick briefly about um, Southeast Commons. Um, this is a project that came before the board a couple, maybe six years ago. No. Um, it was like three years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It was like 2000, 2018, I think. Um, yeah, that's right. I thought that we had handled an extension on it, but I guess we haven't needed one yet. Um, 2018. So it's uh, right next to Florence Savings Bank on South Southeast Street. Um, they had, right when I started, they got started on the project without doing a pre-construction meeting, without installing erosion controls, they started excavating. And so that was one of my first things to issue them an enforcement order when I started and um, got them to stabilize the site, button it up. Um, and <laughs> they, in doing so, they moved a lot of dirt around. And so now they're basically getting started again, um, remobilizing to do the construction project. And it was painful to go out there and inspect erosion controls because the entire site has reestablished with wetland. Um, it, I'm guessing, was a historic wetland that had been filled. And when they got in there and started scraping off topsoil, um, just the hydrologies there, it, I feel kind of like my hands are tied on it. Um, there is a replication. And I did tell them that prior to putting in doing any of the foundation work that they needed to do the, the replication area first. Um, it's, it's been a little, it's been a little bit of a tough project, but we're all working together trying to, um, you know, do it right and make sure that, um, the, I want to make sure that the wetland is constructed first because there's so much wetland being lost on the site that if we can establish the wetland first, and at least in the spring, it'll be, growing with vegetation and, and um, protected. Um, and so then the rest of the site is going to get constructed. But um, just so that everybody's aware, that work is going to be starting very, very soon. So you'll probably be seeing um, work happening out there in the very near future. They were surveying out there today, I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. OK. Thanks, Erin. Um, so it's 7.30, are you okay with moving to our first hearing? Yes, yep, okay. and I see um, Erin uh, Schifferly is on, she's the applicant, so I'm gonna um, make okay. her a panelist. Can you make me a, like, yes, or two? Of, of course, yep. Erin, and um, also I just wanted to say, um, for members of the public who've joined us, in case you didn't hear my announcement at the top, of the meeting, if you're here for the Shootsbury Road solar project, that application has been withdrawn. So we will not be discussing that project at this meeting. Um, so if you're here just to hear the update on that project, that's all we've got is the application is withdrawn and we will not be discussing it in this meeting. Um, just so you don't have to hold on for us to make it through the rest of this agenda. So with that, Erin, welcome, hello. Hello. Um, if you wouldn't mind um, just giving us a brief introduction um, to yourself and the project, um, then we can uh, ask any questions and, and move from there. That'd be great. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I learned a lot in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Sounds like some interesting work. Um, so fast forward, we're new to the area. We're actually from Western New York. We just purchased this property um, closed on August 31st, and we moved our four kids and our family here um, in order to attend the local Hartsbrook School. Um, previously in Western New York, we had a small homestead, um, so for, we're familiar with our chickens and dog and cat, and um, we had a little bit more property. We had three acres, um, and when we moved here, we were really prioritizing, prioritizing trying to work with the land in a good way. Although, the, as you probably know, in this area, it's very hard to find land sort of close to the Hartsbrook School or the area that we were looking for. Um, so we wound up on about almost an acre, a little bit less. And um, 
we are currently trying to put in or we're applying to put in a small chicken coop that my kids built last spring from upcycled materials. It's on wheels, which turns out to be really good because <laughs> this whole process, um, we've been learning a lot about trying to be respectful and you know where we're placing things. Um, we didn't have any of these rules and regs where we came from. So I've been very thankful for Aaron guiding me through this process. It's been a lot of emails, um, but the project that you have on the screen in front of you is our upcycled chicken coop. Um, and it is about 81 feet directly. So if you walk a straight line from the brook, but it's about 72 feet from the closest diagonal. And the kind of a little bit more tired looking fencing is actually an existing veggie patch that was already here. And um, that's pretty much the basic project is um, the coop. In process with learning and growing and talking with Aaron about wetlands conservation, we discovered we have riverfront property, which we actually didn't know when we bought the property. So I was thankful to learn so much about it. And when I explored back there a little bit to make sure that we were far enough from the brook that we could be um, within regulation and not have to involve the state, um, I found some bittersweet. So Aaron sort of held my hand a little bit to work with that as well. So we've been clipping that manually to try to offset any impact that we might have with this project. I think that's pretty much the long and the short of it. Um, under Aaron's guidance, I also added basic fencing for a dog run. Um, we would like eventually to put in some fencing, probably not until the holidays are over or it's a little bit warmer out, but that's everything on the application. Are there any questions for me? Sorry, we're in the middle of a bit of a toddler meltdown here. Um, Aaron, do you want to share anything like pictures or report from your field visit? Um, yeah, so it's it's a very simple project. Um, this is a, a map showing you the measurements. Um, I did work with Aaron to, to relocate the coop a little bit um, to try to address some, some neighbor concerns. Um, uh, what do I want to say about this? Um, the, the coop does not have any footings. It's very small. It barely even qualifies as a shed. Um, so I, I don't really have any concerns about this. I think it's a pretty minor project. It's minor under state. It's over 50 feet away from the brook. So it qualifies as a, a minor activity under the Wetland Protection Act. Um, I did talk with Erin about her composting plan and it sounds like she is going to be um, taking her compost to, is it Brookfield Farm, Erin? Yes. Yeah, and then the Hartsbrook Farm both accept compost from, um, from, from people. So she'll be periodically taking truckloads of, um, of compost to the, you know, so that she's not putting it back in the wetland area behind her home. Um, but there's a, there is a, um, a veg, vegetated sort of strip along the river. It's not huge, but there's quite a bit of um, brush piles um, along the stream, which provides quite a bit of um, wildlife cover back there. There's no vegetation that's being removed as part of her application. It's the coop and everything is located on existing lawns. So I don't really have any concerns with this. It's like five chickens um, and she's handling the compost responsibly. I don't really have any comments on it. I think it, that it's fine. Okay, great. Thanks, Aaron, Aaron, and Aaron. Um, commissioners, any questions? I'm getting a lot of no's. Um, all right. Well, it sounds like we're leading towards an, a negative determination here, which means that you wouldn't have to file a permanent application, Aaron. Um, let me just see if there are any um, public participants or anyone who wants to make public comment on this application. Uh, if you please raise your hand, Matt. All right, Matt, you should be able to talk. Um, you, you're, yep. Um, hi, um, Matt and Julie Emerson are here. We're the immediate neighbors next to the proposed project. And the first thing I'd like to say is that we were kind of surprised by the movement that Aaron made of the the chicken coop and enclosure because it actually moved it closer to our house. And that was one of our problems as neighbors is we were kind of like worried about 
chicken smell, chicken uh, manure in the ground and that kind of thing. And I, I did a little bit of research on this because I was curious about it. I mean, I, I grew up near farms and I was curious about how one does composting and that kind of stuff. And then it reali I realized after reading the Wetland Pro Protection Act for the state and also for the municipal one that it was a, at a minimum a hundred foot area that it was supposed to be between said project and the stream. And what this committee doesn't know is that right now it's dry there, but in another month or so, that water from the stream actually goes up into the backyards, both of our backyards. And so the wetland area is much larger than it looks today. Um, what the previous owner dumped a lot of vegetation, brush and stuff in there. One of the reasons was to soak up a lot of water. Um, and, and that's why there's a lot of debris back there. But I guess we as neighbors have two questions. The first one is, um, you know, given that there's a 50 foot exemption, could the chicken coop be moved to the middle of their property so that it would not in any way affect either a butter? Because the other butter, I don't know if he's here tonight, but he is also concerned about um, waste management, smells, all that kind of stuff. And um, so, so that would, you know, in fact, we wouldn't really, uh, that would easily accommodate our interests. As her, as the plot indicates, it looks like the chicken, the garden is on an angle. Actually, the garden is perpend is parallel to our our fence line. It's about eight feet from our fence line, and so the chicken coop is actually parallel to our project. It's not closer in toward their house. The the the, the plat is off a little bit there, so it's right next to our fence actually, <laughs> and. So we're, we're concerned about two things. One is that um, chicken manure, bedding, all that kind of stuff, even in the wintertime, is going to be going into the ground. And in fact, I spoke to the poultry inspector, uh, Megan McGrath, about this, and she said that they recommend for backyard chick chicken coops that everybody use sand, that they dig out um, grass and dirt and put sand in. And she said it's totally inappropriate to have it on a lawn. Now, that's not me speaking, that was the poultry inspector for the Massachusetts um, Department of Agricultural Resources. Um, and so what we see is uh, what used to, what is a beautiful lawn in their property is you know, becoming kind of an eyesore, to be honest. And, and, and the fact that it's within 50 feet, if there is a 50 foot exemption, then why can't they move it further away from our fence line and have it equidistant between the two abutters. I think that would be a very workable solution because right now, unfortunately, um, the chicken coop is across from an area that I have a permanent hammock stand in. We have guests have a sitting area right there. Um, you know, we have a deck right there, not too far away. And for us, it, it appears to be not exact, exactly a very pleasant place to have a chicken, chicken farm. I mean, we have fairly close quarters in this neighborhood. So there are really two issues. One is that it's a bigger wetland than you know. Second of all, is that, okay, we can work with a 50 foot exemption. If it's a 50 foot exemption, could the applicants move it more toward the center of their property so that you know, both neighbors might be accommodated? And that's, that's pretty much how we feel about it. And none of this is personal. It just has to do with the fact that my wife and I, you know, we, we've worked very hard. We've been long-term residents here in Amherst for many years, and we've worked very hard to create a space that's both peaceful and pleasant to sit out in the back. And we have meticulous lawn and landscaping care. And we just, um, we, you know, this, this really kind of changes the entire enjoyment of our property back there. And that's as honest as I can be about it. Great, thanks for uh, being here, Matt. Um, and I hear you. I think uh, while um, those are interesting points about the aesthetics um, and the noise and things like that, kind of our jurisdiction is really, and our job here as the commission is to really protect the wetland resources. So we really have to evaluate the impact of the proposed chicken coop just in terms of risk to water kind of quantity, quality, and wetland habitat, um, which is why um, I think what we should go over again here is just how um, the applicant is planning to mitigate potential risks associated with, for example, fertilizer from the, the chicken coop. So um, can you remind us again, um, Aaron, what your plans are for making sure that there's not a buildup of um, 
waste from chickens and and plans for mitigating kind of what could be a risk to to water water quality on the property? Yes. First of all, um, thank you, Matt, for being here and, and sharing that information. That is really helpful to know how you and Julie feel. Um, for the record, um, my husband and I did approach our neighbors to try to find out information from them to see how we could come up with a resolution and um, that did not go anywhere. So um, I do appreciate hearing more about what you're looking for. That's very helpful. Um, we want to do what's in the best interest of everyone involved here. And so to be direct on mitigation of composting and chicken um, waste, as I said, we are experienced chicken owners. So um, in this particular area, different than our last area where we had three acres and it was a little bit more rural of a setting, we've got a compost bin that we can, <clears throat> excuse me, collect it here and it's a four by four. And then from there, um, we will take it over to, there's Brookfield Farm, which accepts local compost as well as Hartsbrook Farm. And my, my, my kiddos are students there. Um, so we're there literally five days a week. So um, this is a family project. We started it with the kids and they're very much going to be involved. And so there's, there's six of us we'll, that will be working on this. And as Aaron said, it's a pretty small coop um, and it's a pretty small setup. And I do wanna say, Matt, that we actually had it on the other side of the veggie patch originally, but then when we got the email from the wetland conservation and working with them and trying to be really mindful of the land and the water, we moved it farther away to the other side of the um, existing veggie patch so that it would be farther away from the water so that we can be more mindful of the existing stream that I think feeds into the actual river itself, correct? The Connecticut River. Um, so yeah, so we will be <clears throat> mitigating by making sure that the waste goes from the chicken coop to the local compost bin and from that compost bin off to Brookfield Farm and Hartsbrook Farm. Does that answer your question directly? Yeah, thanks for reviewing that, Erin. It looks like um, Julia is now on another computer and has her hand up. Um, Matt, I'm gonna uh, take you, uh, disable your talking and promote Julie. Um, what's going on here? All right, Julia, sorry. Julia, um, do you have uh, something con construction to add to the conversation, more information or yeah. something relevant to protecting the wetland? Uh, sure, could you hear me? Yep. Yep, all right, so we, um, as Matt said, we, we looked at a lot of bylaws, both the state and the town, and the state was 200 feet, the town was 100 feet. We didn't see anything about an exception for small projects being 50 feet. So if you could direct us to that uh, in the bylaw somewhere, that would be really helpful uh, to know um, that, that that is such a possibility. So I don't know if we missed it, but I would love to see it in writing somewhere. Erin, do you want to speak to this? Yeah, just give me uh, one second to pull up minor activities under the Well and Protection Act. Okay. Um, so it, it addresses deck sheds, patios, pools, and fencing as being, um, if they're at least 50 feet from the mean annual high water line or wetland. And um, so I didn't hear anything in there about chickens, though. So, so that's what I'm curious about. So where is the 50 foot exemption from the water for poultry and livestock? So we have to evaluate well, the structure. Fencing and sheds and decks, but this is animals excreting waste um, into the ground. So where is that yeah. 50 foot exemption? So the, this would be for alterations. So for placement of structures, um, any kind of, um, you know, structure ground disturbance that we're dealing with. Um, and so in this case, those, the structures are so, are really the, the item that we're regulating um, associated with this. Um, and they are filing a permit. So they're still coming through the conservation commission to get approval. It's not like we're just saying, oh, you're all set and didn't make, require them to file. We're still doing you know, requiring them to come through for an approval. So even though they're over 50 feet and it's exempt under state law as a minor activity, the Conservation Commission under its bylaw is still reviewing to make sure that they're doing this responsibly. Um, 
So again, to repeat, this would be evaluated as a similar structure as a shed under the Wetland Protection Act, and this would be an exemption under the Wetland Protector Act, Protection Act as a minor activity. It is, a, we do have to file a perm or come in front of the Conservation Commission for um, the town bylaw, and that's why as a commission we're focused on what the impacts of this small mobile shed-like structure would be on the wetland. So our job is to protect the wetland, and that's why we're we're focused on um, how this would impact the wetland. Right. I, I understand about the structure, but I would think that you would be concerned about what pathogens are moving into the wetland as well. And so, so I, it's one thing to have a shed with tools in it. It's another thing to have a shed in, in, a, in a run with, with animals in it. And so um, I'm just curious about that. Yeah, so Julia, can you can you see this shared screen now? Um, Aaron is yes. just underlining the relevant section in the um, Wetland Protection Act, so you have it. Just highlighting sort of the pertinent uh, sections. Um, I'm just going to clear this so that I can scroll down. I guess I guess another I guess maybe the question um, I'm asking is there was also a health permit um filed and we never received so Erin did come to talk and it was a very bad time for us so we were not able to talk with her um, about that and so we said that we would put our concerns in writing and go through the process which was through the health um health permitting and we've not heard anything back about that and so maybe it's the jurisdiction of the health that is the issue with the chickens in the waste and the smell and everything else. And so I guess I'm wondering, shouldn't there be an intersection of you know, structure to house chickens? And if that's, if the health issue of the chickens is a health issue, um, shouldn't that be addressed at the same time before getting the go ahead to build a structure to house chickens? Shouldn't we also address the health aspects as well? Yes, I personally agree with you in concept, but um, we have, unfortunately, as the Wetland Con Conservation Commission, you know, our jurisdiction is over protection of wetlands and, and waterways. Um, so unfortunately, those two things kind of go in parallel, and I, I don't have any information about the application into the health department. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess, um, I guess my point's not being understood. It's just, if you're concerned about protecting the wetland isn't isn't that concern also include microorganisms and other things like that or <laughs> so. which is why we why we're asking Erin you know repeatedly about how compost is being managed and she's removed co collecting it on site and then removing it from the site so the residence time of the compost on the site is very short um, so the impact the potential impact to water quality is very low because it's being removed and taken to a another facility that is otherwise able to handle um, that kind of, of material. But so Julie, I, I really appreciate your um, being here and these questions. I think at this point, I'm actually um, going to remove you from the meeting so we can get input from the other commissioners, um, but we can come back if we need to come back to questions. Um, so commissioners, I think we know the full scope of what we're talking about here. Um, does anyone have any questions for Aaron? Uh, yeah, Michelle, go ahead. I was just wondering, Aaron, is um, the method and conditions for removing the compost going to be built into the permit somehow so that it doesn't sort of get lost in conversation here so that, you know, in five years, maybe someone else is going to be using the chicken coop or there may be more chickens, but the conditions of having to remove the chicken manure will still be in place. Yeah, so we'll con we'll condition the determination to include the items that Aaron outlined as far as removing compost from the site. Yeah, and just to clarify that, so what that means is that when we move through this negative determination, literally part of that documentation will have these conditions for compost management on the site detailed um, so that it will stay with the property. Um, so thanks, Michelle. That's a great point. Anna, did you have a question or a comment? Uh, question. So I feel like I should know this because I'm a part of the Brookfield CSA, but do they accept compost year round? Um, or Aaron, what's your 
is your, your composting plan, does it cover the full calendar year between Hartsbrook and Brookfield? So Hartsbrook does, yes. Um, we're part of the winter share at Brookfield and I will determine that for sure once and check in with Aaron to make sure everything is, so that I can put, that's a great, great thing to cover. Make sure that um, one doesn't, but they should overlap, I guess is what I'm saying. So Hartsbrook takes it all year. Okay, so great. Yeah. Brook, if Brookfield doesn't, then I'll still have a secondary backup plan. Perfect. Yeah, and we year round. in between the two of them, so. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's plenty. I just wanted to make sure it was year round coverage, but uh, one or the other. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Thanks, Anna. Anyone else? Comments, questions from the commission? Okay. Um, so I feel comfortable that the management of potential risk to the wetland and water resource here is sufficiently managed and in line with the applicable regulations. Um, commissioners, does anyone have any further questions or concerns to raise on, on that point? Okay. Um, so Aaron, would you put up your, your slide just so we get the um, language correct? I think it's a negative Deter determination which always throws me. yeah and you know what i'm i'm sorry because i'm a little bit uh i didn't actually get the motion up there but it would be okay. a negative determination under the wetlands protection act a positive determination under the local wetlands bylaw all right i got it does anyone else want it or we get if I okay uh, I, move, I move we issue a negative determination under the wetlands protection act and a positive determination under the wetlands bylaw for 55 mechanic street for the construction or for the uh proposed shed chicken coop and fencing within the riverfront area second was that a second from fletcher that i just heard okay uh voice vote uh michelle aye uh larry Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. And I'm an aye. Um, so Aaron, um, follow up with Aaron, who will get you um, the exact language of the conditions um, applied to that, to that determination. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time. Yep. Thanks yep. for being here. Okay. All right. Um, moving on. I forgot to read to open that hearing. You guys have to remind me about this. Um, okay. The next hearing is our 735 hearing. It's a continued notice of intent hearing, niche engineering for Balfour BD Campus Solutions and the University of Massachusetts for proposed construction of new undergraduate and graduate housing and associated parking lots within the buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetland and within 100 feet of Tan Brook. So are you already promoting people, Erin, or should I? Um, I am. Air? So Brittany from um, niche engineering and Chase, uh, Jared, excuse me, from niche engineering. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if anybody else is present on the call for, for the applicant, but those two names I do recognize. Okay. Jared, Brittany, are we missing anyone? Hello. Hey, I think um, just the two of us for now. Okay. If we need someone else to weigh in on something, we can um, point you to the correct person. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so welcome back. Um, nice to see you both. I think we had a lot of kind of outstanding questions from the last meeting, and I know you guys have buttoned most of that up. Um, I'm just pulling up our paperwork so I can remind myself some of that. All right. Um, so yeah, so it looks like Aaron, you put responses to staff question and additional documents in the um, in our OneDrive folder. Um, so commissioners, you should have access to that. Um, Brittany or Jared, would you guys be willing to give us a short update, just kind of a reminder on the project and an update of new information you've provided, kind of a sh short four to five minute overview. Um, and then we can follow up with any updates from Aaron's and question updates from Aaron and questions from commissioners. 
yeah, I, I can give you a little update on what's been happening. Um, so we had a few comments from Aaron uh, from the last meeting and from some of the commission members. And we put together a letter um, addressing each of the comments and providing some additional information that you all seems like have access to. Um, one of the changes that we've made since the last meeting, um, the area um, between the edge of the parking and the tan brook that was previously shown as lawn is now going to be like a wild meadow mix, seed mix. Um, and we have a revised planting plan that shows that. Um, we also got the outfall pipe um, that goes to the Tanbrook video inspected actually this morning. And we did, let me share my screen to talk about this. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. So what we found during the video inspection that about 12 feet from this existing structure here, let me, this structure here, um, so they started here, video inspected towards the outfall and about 12 feet in the pipe was crushed. And so they couldn't video inspect further. So uh, we are talking to Aaron about this um, last week and what our approach could be to cover us in case it turns out that this outfall is in poor condition. So we would like to propose to replace the full outfall um, up to the tan brook. And then once we're able to actually video inspect that entire length, we're only going to replace as far as we need to. So if it turns out that this 20 feet from the end of the outfall is in good condition, we would maintain that and we would really only replace the sections of the pipe that were damaged so that we could limit the disturbance within this area as much as possible. Um, if, if we find that maybe there are a few cracks in the pipe, we might reline it, but obviously if it's crushed, we'll, we'll have to replace it. So we're proposing right now to kind of cover the work for the full replacement of that 12 inch outfall. We would have an erosion control barrier at the downstream end where the wetland line starts. Um, and then one of the comments um, at our last hearing was also about these, the potential erosion at this outfall. So we are proposing some hand placed stone at the outfall. Um, and we actually did not have a good example photo of what we would like that to look like, but Erin sent us one that um, we does represent what we had in mind for that. So that's what's on the screen here. Um, just some stone there to really kind of catch the water as it's falling. So it's not digging away at that finer material. Um, so those are really the two main changes that have happened since our last hearing. Um, and then I think at the last conversation we have, you were asking about um, how we were changing the flow to the tan brook and like we were telling you that we were reducing flow and you wanted to know by how much. So in the 100 year storm, we're reducing the volume of water that goes to the tan brook by about 19%. Um, and I think in every storm event, the 2, 10, 25, 100 year, we're within that 20% range between 19 and 21%. And the Specific numbers are in that uh, packet of information that you have on the OneDrive. And I just want to clear, just point of clarification to what um, Brittany just said. She's talking about stormwater discharge flows there. Yes. I yes, just yes. want to make sure that's clear to everybody on the call. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. That's the volume of runoff that's going to the tan brook from our site. Um, so I think that that's kind of a high level overview of some of the main questions and changes that we had from last time. So I think if you guys have any additional questions, we can move on to that. Okay, great. Thanks, Brittany. I appreciate that succinct overview. Erin, did you have anything to add? Yeah. Um, so there, and we're, we're trying to 
resolve a lot of these things as expeditiously as possible because they're they're so close here. Um, I do have some suggested conditions, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I think so. Just to kind of update the commission, there were, we we uh, niche engineering sent a packet of materials earlier uh, end of last week, which I put in your packets for your review, and um, and then after they sent that material, we actually had a call to discuss everything, and there was a couple outstanding items. Um, and most of those items have been resolved. I think the biggest thing was the, the biggest concern from my perspective was that outfall, outfall pipe that comes to Tanbrook. I wanted them to have a contingency plan in case there was failure of that pipe. Like if the pipe was collapsed and not functioning properly, I didn't want them to have to come back before the board and, you mm -hmm. know, a month with a um, amendment to replace that. So that's, I'm really glad that they got the pipe looked at and, and we're planning for that. Um, I guess I just have a couple quick questions on that item um, for niche. Um, so, um, and I think that the, generally speaking, what they've provided as far as the um, plan for replacement of the pipe is fine and the placement of the stones. They had sent me an example uh, that was a little more intense, I'll say, like in terms of a, a larger amount of stone um, in the stream itself. And so that was the example I sent them. I thought, well, this might actually be a little less impactful, but still do the job of providing the armoring. But um, relative to that plan, I just have a couple quick questions. The first is, is it possible if you end up having to replace the whole pipe to just pull back the outlet a little bit from the stream bank itself um, so that it discharges say five feet away and do like a level spreader similar to what you've shown in your photos um, yeah yeah that's a great question um, so the it so it's something that we might be able to do we can't necessarily answer right now the okay. issue is that um, the elevation here is um we can't see your screen Brittany oh I'm sorry oh, I, I stopped sharing so that we can talk sorry about that and just while you're pulling that up so I noticed that in your proposed order of conditions Aaron you have that if we end up in a situation where this whole outfall pipe has to be replaced or what if the disturbance area changes that niche can submit plans showing like the area of impact so just so everyone knows we're not talking about you know We'll, we'll have some understanding of what has to happen no matter what the outcome is here. Um, yeah. There's, yeah, just wanted to put that context in there. <laughs> okay, um, go ahead, Brittany. <laughs> so the, the, the elevation that we have our outfall pipe at right here is two, around 233 and a half. And the actual um, ground elevation, if we were looking at that 233 and a half elevation would be very close to where this pipe comes out now. It's very steep once you get like close to the edge of the bank here. So we were looking at that and we, we might be able to pull it back like a little bit, but without regrading in this area specifically, it would be hard to pull it back much. Um, okay. We did look at if we can raise this, the part that we still need to look at is if we can raise this entire system to get it to daylight closer mm -hmm. and further back. Okay. Um, and that's what we can't answer today. So we wanted to show this as the worst, worst case scenario. Okay, perfect. So that's, that's my first question. And, and I think that makes sense. The second question is, if it did, if it, if you determined that it was in fact necessary to replace that whole pipe where you're showing your erosion control barrier is mm -hmm far back from the stream, it's, it wouldn't account for impacts that are between the erosion control barrier and the water flow itself. So I guess I'm just wondering what you would do to account for that area. We, we could ha definitely have, I think uh, we would want to have erosion control here in, for as long as possible. And then once they're doing this work, the erosion control would need to be closer right to the edge of the stream. Okay. Um, I think assuming that this isn't all dug up at one time, 
this location made sense to us because it was outside of the wetland flags. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously for the work that's happening closer to the stream, we would need erosion control downstream of it. So one thing I might suggest for this is that the commission understand sort of the variability of the situation and that we may need to address this either depending on how the commission how comfortable the commission would be is if they submit sort of a final plan once they have it and if the commission either wants to review that and give an administrative approval or have me review it and update the commission about that um, with the final plan I just think that it's difficult um, because they haven't snaked the entire pipe to know exactly how much of it is salvageable. Um, and, and it makes sense not to disturb the stream bank if we can avoid it. Um, so I think as is their proposal is fine, but I think we should incorporate an additional condition based on this conversation that a final plan um, should be facilitated either with me and, and the applicant um, prior to implementation or with the commission prior to implementation. Yeah, I think the former scenario is a good one. Have we seen flow during a rain event coming out of this pipe? Like, so do we know if, if it even connects, I guess is the question. Like, I'm just wondering if the likelihood of it being crushed further along the length and, and you know more approximate to the stream is high or low anyone willing to speculate have we actually seen the, the pipe convey water i've been out there when it's raining and i've seen this pipe dry um and that was oh. one of the reasons that i was kind of curious about it yeah. um okay yeah all right all right yeah I think that this is a good way to proceed. I like Aaron where you're leading with these questions. Like I think con considering all possible levels of kind of having to replace that are reasonable to have on the table. Um, yeah, and Brittany, I appreciate what you guys are trying to figure out as you go here. So I appreciate the transparency and working with Aaron on it. Um, were those your main concerns, Aaron? Okay, Brittany, would you mind um, stopping sharing? And I can kind of open this up for the commissioners. Does anyone have any follow-up questions or concerns for Brittany? Seeing, I'm seeing largely no. Okay. No, I, like I said, I'm just gonna echo your thing, Jen, and I appreciate Aaron's approach to this. Yep, okay. Great. Um, so with that, we have a number of members of the public with us, and I'm wondering if anyone is here for this hearing and has any questions um, or comments. I'll remind everyone that we're going to try to limit um, comments and questions to kind of some uh, topics relevant to the jurisdiction of this commission. So that is the protection of the wetland and water resources. Um, impacted by the project and also that we limit the comments to two minutes um, just because we have such a full agenda. So with that, thank you for being here. If you have a question about this, this project, please raise your hand. Um, we can give you access to talk. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone. All right. Um, well, then I guess with that, uh, we're ready for a motion um, to approve. Me... Go yes. ahead, Erin, you're going to pull it up. And yes. that's, so we have to do you want to adjust the language. Oh, you did it already. Yeah, I did. And this is long. Bye. So what I'll do is whomever starts to make this motion, um, which starts oops, starts up at the top here of this text box, I'll just move to the second slide because these are these conditions continue down to the end here. Okay, great. Thanks. Who's, or who's or I can read it if you guys want to say so moved. I'm happy to do it either way, whatever works best for you guys. Anna is your second to last meeting. I will do it. All right. But okay. come on, y'all. Okay. Um, I'm, I move we issue an order of conditions for DEP file number 089-0694 with the following conditions. Boilerplate state and local, local conditions. Monthly monitoring reports shall be submitted by the contractor who shall be trained in environmental monitoring prior to the start of the project. 
The monitoring report shall include photos of the buffer zone, stormwater structures, and Tanbrook culvert. Three quality, well, oh my God, water quality structures have been specified for the project. It is conditioned that all three structures shall have 80% TSS removal capacity. Contact water quality structure manufacturers recommendations shall be submitted to the Conservation Commission. The updated operation and maintenance log shall be revised and resubmitted once the water quality structure being used on the project is select selected. Next slide, please. The contact person maintaining the operation and maintenance log shall be Ray Jackson. I'm not going to read the full title, but we can read. Okay, great. Uh, shop drawings shall be provided to the Conservation Commission once completed. Confirmation of the outfall pipe in a functional condition shall be provided or plans showing the plan to replace the pipe. A photo example of the armoring to be installed at the outfall pipe shall be provided to the commission. And final plan design on the stormwater outfall pipe in Tanbrook shall be submitted by the applicant and approved by the wetlands administrator or the commission as an administrative approval. Someone's got to second that quickly, please. <laughs> Leroy's on the second. Okay, voice vote. Larry. Aye. Rochelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I'm an I. All right, Brittany and Jared, thank you, and best of luck with the stormwater outfall pipe. Thank you very much. Functional thank you very much. Outfall. Have a good night. Okay, you guys too. Thank you. Uh, oh, you're so fast here. <laughs> Okay. I think that's good, right? Okay, great. Moving on. Next agenda item is uh, the notice of intent um, for TRC for ASD shoots for a mass solar LLC for the construction of a photo solar photovoltaic energy generation facility and access road and buffer zone to BBW at Shootsbury Road. And just as a reminder, this application was withdrawn. So we have nothing to discuss um, on this Conservation Commission meeting about this application. It was withdrawn. So um, 7.45, yep. So we'll move um, to an ANRAD. This is a continuation. SWCA for Barry Roberts slash Stanley Mitchell Life Estate for confirmation of resource area boundaries at 246 Montague Road. Let's see, it sounded like the applicant may or may not be here for this one. Mm -hmm. um, are you seeing anyone I'm not seeing? Um, yeah, if, if, the, if anybody from the applicant's uh, representation is here, if you could raise your hand, that would be helpful. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing anyone, but the little scroll bar isn't really behaving for me to scroll yeah, up and down and see for some reason. Oh, maybe it's just because I think that's the max. We have yeah. such a we have such a small attendance list. Tonight. I know, you know, oh, usually I can scroll yeah. through like six pages of attendees, but yeah. tonight not so much. Right. Uh, <laughs> OK, so it seems like maybe they were not able to attend. Um, OK, so to fill in the commission, it sounds like there's been a little bit of back and forth on this project. But most importantly, Michelle and Anna visited the site since our last meeting. So we wanted this this opportunity to talk as a commission, kind of get updated on the project, get a report from Michelle and Anna about what they saw out there um, and talk about kind of what the sticking points are right now with the resource area delineation. Um, so how should we approach this, Aaron? Do you want to share photos and Anna and Michelle, would you guys, um, I guess, um, talk us through what you saw there? Yeah, maybe it, a map too. Yeah, I was going to say, would it be helpful if I pull up the, yeah, can the pull plan up? and just show the area in question? Um, that way there's a little context to it because it's a little ambiguous um, to discuss. So I'm just pulling it up right now. So. Just give me one second. Thanks, Sarah. Michelle, I'll let you go first and then I will. Follow. Okay. So just so that you guys see what we're discussing and what we were viewing in the field. So um, can you guys see this plan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you, what were you going to say? Oh. Just zoom in on it a little bit more. Of, of course. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. So that'll um, do it. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, our report from our peer reviewer basically found found there was a couple issues that were of disagreement. One of them was there was a little bit more of a either a buffer or a, a wetland line here, which I believe they were in agreement on, um, and that SWCA was going to revise. The other issue, which actually you can see on the aerial image, it comes up like this um, off of this little edge. And I'm gonna, now that I've drawn it, I'm just gonna clear my drawing so you can see the, the shadow on the aerial image that actually shows that little swale depression area. And the, the issue at hand was that um, there was, soils were checked there and there were some um, wetland indicators in the soils. Um, and there's also some, plant indicators in the hay field um, as far as rushes and sedges that are growing in that area. And if you walk in the swale itself, you get kind of wet feet. It's a little soft and wet there. So I'm going to just stop sharing for a second so I can pull up the photos and then I'm going to let Michelle and Anna give their um, opinions on it. Sorry, let's just take a second. Thank you, Michelle and Anna, for making time to go out there. Seems like it's a complicated site. So this is sort of standing at the top of the swale, looking down toward um, where the road is. The, the road is, um, is right about here. And so this is just standing at the top of that hill, looking down, and the swale kind of runs like this. This is another wider view of the same area looking down. So it looks like a hay field um, just from a, an untrained eye. This is looking up. I apologize in advance to Michelle for <laughs> capturing you guys standing in the middle of the field. Uh, but you guys, they were standing. All yeah. All business. She was like, do not take my picture right now. <laughs> it's good. Um, but they're standing right smack dab in the middle of the, um, the swale right there. And then this is another photo without them standing in it, but you can see this sort of green patch in the middle where there's, there's some um, rushes and sedges growing in there. And this is looking down at my feet. So you can kind of see what the ground looks like. You can see there's some pockets of standing water there. Um, you know, those are footprints where people were walking kind of in the, in the wetness. So you can see the ground is wet. Um, this is on the other side, so this isn't the area in question. I was just kind of capturing it. But this one is actually a good photo because you can see the swale to some degree kind of like up in this area a little bit from this photo. So anyways, that is what I have for photos of the site. And I will leave it there and let folks share their thoughts. Can you pull back, um, pack up the map, Erin, please? Yes. Thank you. I just, I just think it's kind of almost easier to look at that when we're talking about the vegetation because it's definitely a, you know, formerly grazed cattle pasture and that's what it looks like. But um, based on this topography, so, so first of all, I, I totally agree with the revised wetlands that I think are now in agreement between third party review and SWCA. And then it's just about this, um, basically that with that, place that Aaron called out, which is in a pretty obvious drainage to the site from the top of the hill, which is where the barn is. And you can see even like there's a, <clears throat> like a darker area, which is like a, just a depression that's sort of connected to that drainage area. And there's definitely juncus growing in there. Um, mm -hmm. We, they did a few, um, Jonathan did a few soil samples while we were out there and the soil is pretty disturbed from historical cattle grazing. So soil in itself wasn't an obvious, you know, red flag, but there was some, I guess, oxidation of the roots that we saw. So I don't know. I mean, the wetlands that are flagged, <clears throat> I'm totally in agreement with this drainage area. It's definitely draining the site. And because of historical land use, you know, it's a little, it's a little uncertain as far as like the clear soil and plant indicators. So it's pretty disturbed, but <clears throat> that's what I saw. It was, had just rained when we were out there and it was pretty wet. 
So I don't know what, what Anna's impression was. Uh, you're much more eloquent than I am. I was going to say it's pretty wet. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think that this is, I completely second everything Michelle just said, right? Like not, no disagreement about the new wetlands flagging, but, um, I think that the, it was visible like to the untrained eye. This is, this is a visible shift both in the vegetation and in the general, um, that general area that you're seeing on the map there. So I just reiterate, I mean, I would have done a much poorer job had I gone first. So thank you, Michelle, for going first because you captured it. Okay. So, and our so, third part, sorry. sorry. So just as a reminder, our third party reviewer would have included this as wetland. So it was identified as wetland. By that was my question. Review. Yeah. Yeah. That's what brought it out, right? Was so we have a disagreement between the applicant and the third party review here. Um, commissioners, any other questions or observations? Sorry, I interrupted you there, Fletcher. No, that was my question. I forgot what the uh, third party review said about this particular site. And that, that's mm -hmm. obviously what the disagreement's about. Um, and then moving on from it though, um, I mean, soil's a major indicator, but obviously because of the disturbance. So I guess that's why we're here, trying to figure out what we're gonna figure out, how we can we're first trying to get consensus of this area from us and then kind of move on from there. Yeah. Yep. So I want to kind of and see think about the soil I... thing. Yeah. Right. Larry or Leroy, do you guys have any questions or thoughts on this? Okay. So my instinct is that this should be mapped wetland. Um, it's to me from a drainage and surface area delineation perspective connected to other mapped wetlands on the site. So it's not like it's an isolated pocket right. that would be like a bylaw only wetland. This is a connected wetland. Um, and I, yeah, you know, the nice. reason we have a third party review is for situations like this. And so my instinct is to ask the applicant include that in the delineation or we deny the application, um, but I'm open for input on that if um, you guys think we don't have the information to support that stance. That's the um, question, Aaron, right. Erin, was Emily, it was Emily, right? The third party reviewer. Um, was she like a hard yes on this? I just, I'm trying to remember the conversation. Yeah, so it was definitely mapped, okay. Yeah, and I mean, I think the feeling I got from SWCA was that they were a hard no on it. Um, and so, uh, I mean, my, I always move to a compromise. That's just what I always recommend in a situation like this, because when you have, uh, I, I mean, there's a couple ways you could go. You could compromise and say, let's map a portion of it and try to protect as much of it as possible, recognizing that maybe we're not going to get all of it. Or the commission could just say, we want all of it mapped and that's it. Um, I think my only concern is that because there are portions of it that are sort of marginal in terms of identifiers, that if we told them to map all of it and it went to appeal, that it's it's almost like a tiebreaker in the sense of like having DEP go out and look at it. And if they're looking at it and they're saying, we don't see soils here, we don't think it's a wetland, then they could overturn the commission's decision and issue a superseding order. So I always try to find a compromise where we can keep it under our jurisdiction to on the order of conditions or on the ORAD um, as much as possible. Um, yeah, Fletcher. So what type of, um, you, should, you should just run for Congress there, Aaron. Anyway, um, what type of compromise are you talking about then? Are you saying half? Are you saying two thirds, right? Or unless the commission's not even considering, sorry. I don't yeah, to... so that, that makes me pretty uncomfortable just because you know we're the ones closest to the resource and have responsibility to the town. So, I mean, 
if it were borderline for our third party reviewer, I would feel differently about this. I mean, she is an expert in wetlands and would include it in the flagging. So to me, I'd feel, um, I feel better about a clear stance in terms of protecting the resource for our town. But I totally hear you, Erin, and I understand the, you know, the long view of, of trying to, yeah, Leroy, go ahead. I'm wondering, Erin, I, I hear you on, it may go to appeal, uh, and it does look like the soil case would be weak. Doesn't the connectivity uh, boost your case significantly, though? Because, I mean, we've seen other cases in similar type of field scenarios where it's just like a, a solitary swale, and that I feel like could be argued down pretty quickly. But in this case, to Jen's point, pretty clear the connectivity is there and easily mappable. Uh, and just to make it clear, I'm with Jen. If you're going to map it, it's going to be 100%. I, I hear you, Aaron. I like compromises too, but it doesn't really make sense um, intellectually on this one. You know? Yeah. And I think, I mean, we just talked about Southeast Street Commons, you know, like that was the great debate about that that wetland in the middle of the property. And sure enough, like the hydrology was there. It's just that the site was so impacted that the second you got rid of the artificial soil or the disturbance, like the hydrology reestablished. So chances are you clear that swale or change it and you'll, you'll see the connection immediately. Um, so. Well, I am 100% behind you guys. And I think you, just for the record, you guys are awesome. Um, I, it's, it's always a tough, um, a tough tightrope for, for me to walk because, um, I'm, I'm trying to, to recommend something that's, that's a balance of, of no one's going to end up happy in the end, you know, and, and if I've done my job well, that's the outcome that nobody's happy, uh, because everybody's had to compromise, but I, 100% am behind what you are saying. I am 100% in support of what you are saying. And I 100% agree with you. And I think if that's the way you guys feel, I stand behind what you are suggesting 100%. This is a drawing from Emily, uh, her sketch. So I just wanted to include this because there was a question from Fletcher about the extent of it. Now, so here's the, here's the tricky thing about asking SWCA to flag it. If they go out there and they don't think it's a wetland, they're going to flag it the way they see it. So would we then have Emily flag it and have them map it as Emily has flagged it? Um, that is kind of the, I think, I think 100% we tell them to, to flag it and to include it. Um, it's just a matter of, um, if they, you know, how we sort of posture ourselves in terms of the delineation itself, if they're disagreeing that it exists. Right. The extent of it and whatnot. Yeah. Um, well, it's not unreasonable for Emily to go out there with them and flag it and they can survey in those flagged points in order to map it. Um, that's probably the best outcome in terms of protecting the resource too, is having our third party reviewer and their wetland delineation team out at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments or thoughts on that? Can I just make sure I'm really clear? So what you're saying is if they disagree and there's a, a lawsuit or they somehow they disagree and it goes up to DEP, that DEP only, would you, they would also use vegetation, indica vegetative indicators and things like that in addition to soil. It's not just the soil because they would ideally take into account that this was a cattle pasture, right? So it's not- Right, it's- That risk a little bit better. Right, it, all I'm saying is it would be a tough review because there's two very experienced people arguing two polar opposite decisions, two polar opposite opinions and, 
sometimes when you get a third person, some people are more conservative and some people are more liberal in their delineation. Somebody might come out there and say, this isn't a wetland, sorry. You know, and somebody might come out there and say, this is absolutely a wetland. It really, there is, there is some object, you know, um, some subjectivity involved in the, in the delineation process. And, um, and so that's all I'm pointing out here is um, I want to make sure that the commission is on solid defensible ground in how it's delineated. I mean, yeah, so I guess I got a slightly differing sense from you when I went out with, I'm forgetting his name. Um, Jonathan. Jonathan, thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't get as solid of a, um, I think, I think on principle, SWCA is not going to be on board with what Emily Stockman is saying, but um, I guess I'm less convinced that she's not correct. <laughs> I, th I think she's right. And so, I mean, I, and I, I think that they, would, I, I think, I don't think that, I don't know how to phrase this. You don't think that they're going to be in as in strong opposition as we might be anticipating that they will. I be. think that they're, they're, they're going to hit a point where they can't be in as strong opposition as they want to be. That's right. What I mean. I well, so think that also just one second on this DEP involvement. I mean, right. this is a story that's told again and again and again in Amherst because a lot of our wetland resources are impacted by situation disturbances exactly like this one. Mm -hmm. So having DEP involvement and expertise in a situation like this could be a really good thing. Help you know help us understand how to manage these situations moving mm -hmm. forward. I mean, we get an Android like this very regularly at this point, um, mm -hmm. which is, we just have a lot of flux and a lot of applications coming through this. So, I mean, personally, I would welcome, you know, DEP expertise in a situation like this because it's gonna happen again. Um, so that's another way to look at it. I mean, sure, mm -hmm. it's a tough appeal, you know, it's, it's, you know, not a clear case, but that's why there's an appeal process. You know, so what the way that we should be looking at it is based on the information we have and based on our responsibility to the town, is this something that, you know, we feel we have enough evidence to support. Um, so that's another way to think about it. I want to, so unless anyone has any, anything to add to that, um, Aaron, would you mind stop sh sharing just so I can see everyone? <laughs> of course. Um, I mean, does anyone else have thoughts or feelings? Yeah. One suggestion I was going to say is. I don't mind going out and being there with Emily and Jonathan and saying, being a third person to balance the opinion, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, and I would be, and I mean, that's your job. Yeah. I, I would be happy to do that and sort of try to facilitate, let's flag it correctly based on what we're seeing. Um, so that might be a, comprom a a potential compromise that we could come up with for the final delineation that's shown on the plan. Yep. Um, we still haven't given the public a chance to um, comment or ask any questions. So commissioners, unless you have, if anyone has anything, um, okay, I'm not seeing anything big. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, take some, some public input here. Um, so, uh, attendees, thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to just remind you that if you could keep the comment, the contents of your comments and questions relevant to our jurisdiction here. So what really is at debate is the delineation of the resource on this site. Um, and secondly, because um, we have a long agenda and a lot of participation in our meeting, we're trying to limit comments to and questions to about two minutes. So if you could just be mindful of the time, we very much appreciate it. Um, so with that, Meg Gage, you should, hello Meg, be able to talk. Thank you everyone. I'm so impressed with how much you all know and how thoughtful you are and what great meeting skills you all have <laughs> listening. And I'm just really impressed with this group. Um, I think it's a fabulous idea for Aaron to go out with Emily and Jonathan as kind of a mediator person. I really appreciate um, Leroy and Jen's uh, and others wanting uh, uh, having a little allergic reaction to the word compromise. <laughs> Um, I'm also curious, I know we, in this meeting, in other meetings, we don't talk about, we don't speculate on motives, but it's 
curious to me uh, why we're not getting response from SWICA and it's been going on since August. And I'm worried that at the December 22nd meeting, I, I got an unfortunate phone call, Jen can't be there. I hope we're gonna have a quorum and I know we're gonna lose Anna, which I'm, I'm deeply appreciative, Anna, of you uh, running for the council. I can't, you're gonna be awesome. Um, but um, I'm worried about how this decision is gonna be made given all the moving pieces. Um, I'm the, a butter that's in the little, you can't see it now, but the little, we're literally this little square that's carved out of the uh, east side of the farm. Um, and we're not opposed to this. We just want to be sure that it's not um, disruptive to the environment or our neighborhood. And I'm just, again, thank you. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Jen, Thanks. you're amazing. I can't, I don't never met you, but you're amazing <laughs> chair. I just can't believe how on top of everything you're like, whoa, where did you come from? Anyway, thank you. Everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here, Meg. Um, can you come to Oliver? <laughs> no, um, I, yeah, so just to your point about moving the application along, that is something that we're all keeping an eye on, especially Aaron. And in fact, they asked to continue to the next meeting and Aaron said, you know, no, we're going to convene and talk about this hearing tonight um, so that we could provide, get the updates from Michelle. Thank you. And Anna, um, mostly because we're mindful of the fact that we're, um, you know, that Anna's moving on. Um, so yeah, I guess we're moving along as best we can. I think what we'll, I, I think we'll keep it moving offline too, so that before the next meeting, hopefully we will have had a chance to get Emily and SWCA and um, Aaron back into the field. So, so we'll keep it moving. Um, yeah. So thanks thank for being you. here. Um, and you, hopefully we'll you. see you again soon. <laughs> you will. <laughs> um, all right. Janet Keller, welcome. You should be able to talk. Oh, yeah. Well, everything that Meg said, um, we deeply appreciate the care and um, the detail with which you um, conduct the delineations and um, the thought that you give to how your actions will actually um, result in protecting the wetlands um, um, in the end. Um, it's so appreciated. Um, I'm wondering, um, quite a few people spoke to me today um, saying they were going to be present and watching. And I'm wondering if there's, um, you speak a lot about the resource and I wonder if one of you could just simply give um, a few sentences that make a little bit clearer. I think you were pretty clear, but if you could just clarify a tiny little bit about what the disagreement is about and um, what terms like the resource, you, what, what you're really talking about there. You know, I know what it is, but uh, I'm not sure that's as clear for the people who are taking the time to watch. If you could do that, I'd, I'd love it. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Janet. And point taken, we definitely like dove into the heart of this one just because it we know how sticky it is. Um, so maybe I'll give a quick overview and then Aaron, you can fill in what I, whatever I miss. Um, so the application we're considering right now is a resource area delineation, um, abbreviated no notice of resource area delineation, ANRAD. Um, it is a precursor generally to some activity on site. And what it does is it permanently and formally delineates the wetland and water resources on the site. So we are saying and documenting um, in a very, very final way exactly where the boundaries of the wetland and water resources are. Depending on the exact 
uh, identity of those wetland and water resources, those delineations have different buffer widths and different um, ways of understanding the distance from that resource. But um, really that's the heart of it is that we're literally drawing on the map exactly where the resource we're trying to protect is. Um, so this underlies any future activity because it then determines the distance from this delineation that act site activities can occur on the site. Um, Aaron, say that another way or, or fill in where I missed. Yeah, so the boundary once it's approved by the commission is valid for three years and, and the applicant can get that get an ORAD extended as well. So if it takes more than three years for them to file their notice of intent, they could get an extension on that. So that's where an ORAD or an ANRAD is a little different than an RDA, which is what you know we saw earlier this evening. So um, it's very important that we get it right because it will basically, um, uh, those boundaries that we identify are permanent boundaries under the law for the next three years and potentially longer. Commissioners, anything we left off in that description? And thanks, Janet. That's a great, thank you for helping us zoom out and kind of fill everyone in on exactly what we're talking about. I apologize, I, I should have given a better intro to that. Um, but yeah, so again, like what's at stake really is that we have a disagreement between the applicant and our third party reviewer of the delineation on one small area. I mean, it's remarkable the extent that we have agreement actually on this site is pretty good. It's just a debate of whether or not we include that connected additional swale in the delineation. Um, so Janet, any, do we, do we hit the mark on that? Any follow-up uh, questions? I, I actually, you know, I, I feel like I tried to delve into this and I understand it fairly well and I, uh, I gained a deeper understanding. So thank you um, for that. Um, and that chased the other thought I had in my head, but. Um, okay, thanks. Appreciate well, thank it. you. Yeah, and, and tune in, um, keep an eye on the agenda and tune in for the December 22nd meeting. I'm sure this will come up again. Um, so, um, does anyone else, any other attendees, member of the public have any questions or comments on this ANRAD? I see Meg's hand up again. Is he, do you mean to have your, Meg, do you have another I question? Just, or I just, when I was appreciating everybody, I failed to appreciate the most amazing person is Aaron Jock, who's just stunning and uh, professional and thoughtful. So that's all I wanted to say. I forgot when I was, you, you guys are an amazing team. I've sat in on a whole bunch of uh, town committees and you guys, you guys rock. <laughs> Thank you, Meg. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Does anyone else, any other participants have any comments or questions? Oh, oh, Nancy. All right, Nancy, we can see you and we should be able to hear you. Go ahead. Hi. Just one very quick question. I also appreciate and have learned a lot during this time, even though I'm also falling asleep. I, I don't know how you do it, but uh, tell many people are on the Zoom, just how many people are listening to you? I, I Seven of you on the commission, is that right? Yeah, um, well, so our commission at full, is seven, yeah, right, yeah, I can count. Um, and we right now we have ten attendees in the as members of the public. Um, that's kind of oscillated throughout the meeting, but I think it's probably maxed out in like the 20, low twenties, and then people have logged off. So right now we have ten attendees. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks. All right. 
So it looks like that's gonna do it for public questions and comments on this hearing for tonight. Um, Aaron, procedurally, how should we move forward? Um, I think that I would, uh, it, it would make sense probably for somebody to make a motion of what the expectation is for the revised plan. And also, <laughs> I would probably recommend that we have a deadline set for revisions coming to us because this has been, we're at the end of August, this was submitted and now we're coming into January. And, you know, Jen, we're going to lose you at the next meeting. We lost Laura tonight. We're losing Anna on the first. That's three members lost from voting on this project. And as meetings move forward, we're going to continue to lose voting members on it. So, um, and people can view the proceeding if they miss one meeting, but any more than that, um, they can't vote. So we're just going to have problems with a quorum if, if this continues to get pushed out. So, I mean, just, yeah. So Leroy, I don't want to step in and assume it'll be okay for the next meeting. Would you be comfortable with a deadline for the applicant to show the additional area mapped as a delineate included in the delineation or, you know, the area that agreed upon in the field by the applicant, the third party reviewer and Aaron? Um, by the next meeting. Deadline for next meeting. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, great. Aaron, are you okay with that, or does that seem unreasonable? I mean, it's two weeks away, and that would mean that we would have to convene three people out in the field, and then somehow pick up the flags and get them on a plan. I think that's a little tight. I would probably give them at least thirty days, but I again will defer to what you guys think. It's it has been a long a long wait for revision. So I will definitely yield to what you think. Well, what about middle ground there? Like, could we try to get the three people out in the field before the next meeting so that there's at least a plan to move forward? And then if they need to go back out and survey and flagging after that and submit a final plan after that, we can. Um, I'm just, it's, it's going to get harder to see what's going on out there. Anyway, the ground mm -hmm. is freezing. It's, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to yep. get snow, hopefully, eventually. Um, oh, look so. outside. We got snow. Oh, really? Yeah. It doesn't snow in South Amherst. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have does that make sense to you, Leroy? Uh, it does. Yeah. That can work. Okay. Commissioners, everybody. Okay. Yeah. So ahead. having a field visit prior. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> For the regular I agree with Aaron, it's going to be real tough during holiday season and two weeks to get real plans drawn, but I think we can probably get everyone up together in the field. Yeah. Well, so then, sorry, I'm just trying to follow the logistics. Um, so will you then make sure that Laura knows she has to rewatch tonight so that, cause I won't be here post post. I just want to make sure I'm not screwing us up. Yeah. And I can rewatch the 22nd. Watch. Okay. Yeah. Great. So what I have is um, that we're going to have a field visit prior to December 22nd and that by January 12th, or actually it would end up being um, January 7th, we would have a plan revision to the commission that would give us time to review it prior to the 12th meeting. So by January 7th, a revised plan um, is being requested to be submitted that would include that um, wetland swale. Yep with the delineation consistent with the third party reviewer. Do you want me to reread that just to make it easier for a motion? Yes. Okay. Um, so what I'm hearing from the commission is that they would like for a field visit to be conducted prior to the December 22nd meeting uh, to review the, um, the wetland swale that was identified by the third party reviewer and that by January 7th, a plan should, a revised plan should be submitted to the Conservation Commission, which includes the wetland swale um, consistent with the third party reviewers comments. Larry, no, so moved. 
Second. second. So move. We're giving Anna the second on her second to last meeting. Uh, All right. <laughs> Voice vote. Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I'm an I. <clears throat> I'm a little so scared that, about what you're going to give me on my last meeting now. I'm not going to lie. Well, I'm not going to be here. So well, somebody that's else true. is going to okay. have to give you a hard time. <laughs> right. So just, this is just an idea to throw out there. Um, do we want to just continue their hearing to January 12th? Because if that's the case, then that would set kind of a timeline for the next review. And then that would mean that we wouldn't lose Jen as a potential voting member on the 22nd. And... That makes a lot of sense to me. I have no problem with that. Anyone? Makes sense unless they're going to push say no. Right. So they're gonna, right. They're going to say right. no anyway. They're going to tell you no over the phone and we don't have to have a meeting about it anyway. So that's you guys call on the continuation. They did request a continuation to the next meeting, but um, we're only going to have Right now, we only know there's going to be four members on the next call. Yeah. So I think it makes sense to continue to the January 12th meeting. And Fletcher, if they, I mean, we can still move forward with the hearing without them. Yep. So um, if we are going for January 12th, I would suggest uh, 7.35 as the time for that continuation. So we need a motion to continue the hearing. I'll make a motion to continue the, oh, dang, what's the number? Shoots Bay Road. 246 Montague 246 Road. 246 Montague Road. That's all I got. To, to January 12th, 735. That, that too. Second. Voice vote. Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I'm an I. Fletcher, you got to be careful or Meg's going to take back all her nice things. We have I to know. No, you've no. got a standard to uphold. There, guys, there's a buffer <laughs> plus and minus 10 minutes from nine o'clock where like no motion <laughs> has to be correct. It's okay. We're doing, everyone's okay. doing their best here. Yeah, it's, it's, that, it's, everyone's it's, doing their best. <laughs> all right. <Shadow> box. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'll pull it, I'll pull it together. All right, I think yeah. we're good on that hearing. Are we do? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. We're, yeah. So, okay. what's left? What's left? Okay, I'm just gonna do a really quick, um, just to let you guys know what's happening in town, just in case you guys see see work going on. We already talked about Southeast Commons. We know that's happening. 38 mm -hmm. Chapel Road. Um, there's gonna be a pool going in on, in the spring. They are over 50 feet, or I'm sorry, over 100 feet from the wetland, so they're outside of jurisdiction but they are in that location where there's some hazard pines that um, are all dead, dead stand behind them. So they might be coming back to us in the not so distant future with an emergency certification. Um, Amity Place, we had permitted some drainage improvements there. They um, are beginning work. We did a pre-construction um, this past week. Uh, the East Leverett Road waterline project has more or less been wrapped up and stabilized. The there's a single family house I've been monitoring out there too, that which is pretty pretty well stabilized at this point. Uh, there there I put a note in the in an email that we have an ANRAD coming before us at the next meeting um, on the 1222 agenda for um, a Northampton Road site. Pretty simple site. I include fo included photos in the OneDrive for it. Um, if anybody wants to get out there, please let me know because I've already gone out to see the site. I don't really have any concerns. It's pretty cut and dry. And monitoring 187 College Street, that's under construction. Uh, 300 North Pleasant, um, that is, there's going to be a demo taking place there um, in the next few weeks. And then the site is going to get shut down until spring when they do the, the new footprint for the structure. Uh, Greenfield Savings Bank is going to be starting construction down on the corner of Amity Street and University Drives, be aware of that. And also be on the lookout for a culvert replacement Kestrel Land Trust driveway. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I think we've covered all the business that I had that I wanted you to cover this evening. Did you want to, Aaron? did you want to bring up, did, how, did I black out or did we talk about the bylaw review? Oh, uh, thank you so much. Um, 
Yes. So um, we've not really been being successful in terms of getting to our bylaw. My hope was that things were going to slow down a little bit and that we were going to be able to get to address some of our bylaw revisions that are needed. So I'm hoping that um, the commission would be supportive of setting up a bylaw subcommittee um, of two members. And I've already reached out to two members to try to seek um, their involvement. And both of them have been um, in favor of participating. Um, so it would basically be two members twice a month for a lunch hour review of what the changes are going through um, kind of a marked up document and the, what changes were made and why. And then we would come forward with a recommendation to the commission, at which time we would set up a hearing to review those changes with the entire board. But it's just looking like we're not going to be able to review it section by section during the meetings at this point. Yeah, so I just, for my two cents, I I support Aaron on this. I mean, the bylaw revisions have been like literally something we've been trying to get to since I joined the commission, um, which is, I don't know how long I've been here, four, five, almost five years. Um, and Fletcher can speak to whether they were going on before then, but it's something that will like streamline our meetings a lot. Um, we get some people are forced to file for things that under the Wetland Protection Act like really wouldn't come before us. And so because lately our, we've just had so many hearings and so many applications, there's so much going on in Amherst. Like I think it'll be painful to put in the time now, but it's gonna save us and make us more efficient um, in the future. So I think this is a worthwhile effort. Good luck. I'm really excited that this is happening. I'm sorry I can't be a part of it because this is really cool. I mean, like this is really, it's important and impactful. So thank you. So when I asked our two newest members to do it because I figured it would give them kind of a good, you know, really like get them deep into the, the weeds, you know, of, the, of everything and really understand kind of and give them a, a good tutorial on every on our entire bylaw and the process. So it'd be kind of cool. Really, into, would be, yeah, really into the junkus, Michelle. The junkus, exactly. Get into the junkus. <laughs> so anyway, there's a motion here to do this. And um, I don't know if if um, Michelle and Leroy wanted to voice their their um, if they are still interested and, and happy to do this. <laughs> still down to get in the junk kiss. <laughs> you know what we need instead of like the number one foam thing, so it's like a wetland plant, you know, a foam finger with a wetland plant. A sensitive foam fern. Yeah, it was like somebody fern. says something, you just do this. Oh, my computer's gonna shut down. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, well, make the motion quick so that we can- I may have set up a, a subcommittee consisting of two members plus wetlands administrator to review current regulations, work of previous members and former staff proposed revised set of regulations to the commission for review, public input, public hearing and adoption, work to be done in posted public meetings with minutes, time limited work to span up to four months beginning in January 1st, 2022. Second. Second. All right, I got a second from Larry, I think. All right, voice voice vote, Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you, everyone, for doing that. Yes, thank you, guys. OK. Well, you heard it. The public says it. Doing a good job, everyone. So at the next meeting, um, you guys have to be extra nice to Anna, but also we probably need to pick a new representative to the CPA, right? You do. Um, yes. and I, but this session, this CPA session is over right now, though. Is that correct? We vote tomorrow. And so that was yeah. the only other thing I just wanted to briefly mention was I have not heard any um, uh, objection to the projects that I mentioned to you. Um, I will let you know we're, we're still kind of muddling through some sort of regulatory stuff with one of the projects, um, the, the Mill River project, which um, 
from my understanding, and this is what I'm seeking to confirm with you all tonight, you all do support the, um, there's no objection to the projects that would impact conservation land and we are, we are generally in support of those. Um, that's the message I was going to carry through on that. We vote tomorrow. Um, so speak now or forever hold your peace on those. Great. Thank you. Anyone? Yeah, next meeting we'll have to pick a new rep. So I'm happy to talk to anybody about those responsibilities. Fletcher can also speak to them very clearly. So uh, yeah, you had a much different committee than I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Fletcher, what? You want to do it again? I mean, I didn't That's have what a I heard. <laughs> I'll put it, I'll consider it because it was difficult. I had issues in the last one. So I will speak strongly. I will say it's been a really good experience. And so, I mean, I, I will truly like, I support, uh, ask me any questions, but truly it's been a really good experience. You get to see a whole other side. Um, of of the way that this town functions, and um, I think yeah, there's there's been some really good proposals. Yeah. Great, thank you, Anna. Okay, so that's the end of our agenda. Um, I think we just need a motion to end the meeting. What do we call it? Adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, <laughs> oh, Larry, and what's nine oh three. All right. This is the earliest meeting we've had in a long time. I know. Wow. <laughs> Voice vote. Roy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Lemon. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Have, Have a good, good night. night. Talk to you all Enjoy. Soon. Bye, guys. Take care. <laughs>